Alright family, welcome back to the channel. I am Lady Nika and with um, tonight's episode of the Have and the Have Nots. As you can hear, I am currently dealing with a really bad cold. And that's why I ain't been on, but anytime I can have a little voice, I'll try to come in and get a video done for you guys. So I apologize ahead of time for how I'm sounding, but you know, it's Winter Beach, okay? This is a have and have not. So I think this is season six. Well, okay, six episode four, the surgeon, something along that line. Anyway, the episode opens up with Veronica. Now Miss Thing is sitting there in her bedroom, looking at her old marriage, uh, <clears throat> audio or video of her marriage. You know, the day her and David got married, and oh, she in there having her away next hell moment, remembering when he liked the uh liked her ass or whatever. Okay, sitting there, she going down memory lane and crying and whatnot. He just don't. He used to love me. He used to love me, but now he want to kill me. He want to get rid of me. He want to disrespect me while R.K. laying in her bed sleep. He's tired of hearing it because he tried to get him some sleep, so he tell her to uh, hang the, uh, cut that shit off and get in the bed because he trying to sleep. She told him to stop being disrespectful. He told her she crazy. She said, stop calling me crazy and stop being disrespectful. He continuously calls her crazy to the point where he turns the damn um, video off of her and David's uh, marriage uh, situation and call her crazy again. Pissed off, child. This time she gets up and she attacks him. He basically saying he ain't getting up, going nowhere. She is crazy and he ain't apologizing. So she turned into a calm person. And I'm going to tell you something. A man can't stand a cool bitch. I'm going to tell you why. Because when that woman turned cool, that means she finna go crazy. And that's exactly what Veronica did. She went from being on 10 to coming down all the way to a level pot 2.5 to a good 3. Told him, lay down and get you some rest. You're right. The man's tired. He need to get him some rest. She tucked him on back in the sleep, uh, to, into the bed. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, you just really retarded. Because you just said this chick is crazy. And you saw that she was very erratic with you at first to the point of even trying to swing on you a couple, two, three, four times. And you think that in just a matter of seconds, she going to calm down enough to just let you go to sleep and there be no repercussions? Oh, you slow as hell. Mm -hmm. You slow as hell. You ain't going to work for Veronica, even though she likes the fact that you buck her sometimes. You're a little too damn slow because, child, Ray Charles would have seen this coming. She get him to tuck on back in. I'm going to tuck you on to sleep. Get you some rest. Get you some rest. And she sashays on down to the kitchen and get her old nasty piece of boiling pot. Put her some water in it. And she begins to prepare to make him a lovely pot of grits. I said I could tell Tyler that writ this, wrote this because this damn show what he said in one of his movies. She about to make grit ball. Now while all of that is transpiring... Where else we going to go with this next? Landon. Landon and Charles are sitting up in the hotel room. He was trying to get Candace off the brain. They began to have shots together. Obama gets so damn drunk that he can't even stand up, much less take his clothes off, so he need to lay down. Landon helps him to get out of his shirt, get out of his shoes. And then he says he needs something to get his mind off of it because he's Candace is just too much. Now, as he's saying this, remember, Landon thirst bucket ass is uh, on his knees in front of him because he was helping him out his clothes and shoes. Landon says to the president elect, let me do some. Maybe I can help you with getting your mind off things. And Charles made the mistake of saying, I would love that. Child, Landon decided to try to unzip the president-elect's pants, honey. He about to give him some full-out fellatio. But see, Charles wasn't that damn drunk. 
he quickly realized, I mean, there's a man down here filling with my clothes. So he sits up, he mad, now get out. Landon is looking like a scared ass um, a cornered child. He backing up, get out. So Landon flies the damn ho uh, hotel room and runs down to the bar area where Candace is sitting her ass there. Just got through telling Rocky she don't fool with him and she ain't, she'll she beat his ass again, watch his mouth. You know, all of that because she, remember that Rocky was the one that told Oscar her business. And he was like, well, you handle that. She said, what you say? Say it again. You know I beat your bitch ass up again. Baby, he bagged down. She told him, give me a drink. So here comes Landon. He's all nervous. Candace is asking him what the hell is wrong with him. I just lost my job, I think. Wow. Then he begins to blame her. You the one said he was gay? She was like, I, that man is not gay. I was just saying that. What's wrong with you? He tells her what he almost was about to do to the president and how mad he got at him and put him out. Candace is trying to figure out what made you believe that that man was gay. I know he's not gay. I was just saying that. I know that very well that he's not gay. So now Landon is in his feelings because he don't know if he's going to be sitting on the unemployment line going through uh, hard times and depression all because his thirst overcame him in a moment. That was foolishness. So now he needs to go back up to his room with his drink. And he tell Candace he can't stand her ass. Candace ain't did nothing to you, bro. Now, Miss D.A. girl, Sarah done, uh, I guess she went back to her job. She get out of her car and crackhead <laughs> Wyatt is in the trunk talking about, let me out, I can't breathe. So she opened up the trunk. She like, what you doing here? He said, this is the only way I could have got away from my parents. He want to know, do she got some money? She said, for what? He done grabbed a woman pocketbook, y'all, and going through it. She said, look here, you might be able to help me. Come with me and talk with my boss, and then we'll go back to my apartment, and I'll get you some money. And he's so desperate for a fix, he willing to do that with her. <laughs> now... You got Mitch down over at the uh, Iron Bone, his people's establishment, and uh, he's sitting there waiting to, I guess, talk to Mama Rose. Now, we see Benny standing up there talking his uncle to a police officer who's trying to get more information on the stabbing that happened at his place. But see, they ain't no snitch, honey. They don't snitch to the police. They handle their situations and problems on their own. They do not call the police and we don't snitch bitch okay we don't do that we we just don't do that that ain't what we do so after the police officer leaves Mitch is asking him you know you know that uh why you did that I'm gonna handle that Benny you know how we do you know how I mean Mitch we gonna handle that so now Benny is I mean um Mitch is trying to get Benny to back off of well get Benny to back off of uh Mitch is trying to get Benny, uh, Benny to back up off of, uh, I keep saying Benny, don't I? Okay, y'all. Uh, <laughs> remix. Mitch is trying to get Benny. I, my mind is just, y'all just don't know. This cold got me going. I'm so sorry about this. But, um, yeah, you got Mitch trying to talk Benny into not, you know, coming for Benny. And Benny is concerned. Why are you so What's up with you and this kid? Well, I've been knowing him since high school. I don't like that. But just so you know, Mama Rose now ain't looking for him. So ain't no hit out on uh, on him from us. Now, he's still somebody out there dealing with him, but it ain't us, okay? So now, Mitch is asking, well, if it wasn't you, who is it? He said, look, let me tell you. At first, he didn't want to tell him. But he eventually broke it down to him. Look here. The reason why we not looking for him is because I told Mama Rose I would get the money and the interest. Now, you didn't gave me this bloody-ass money, but I'm going to still need my interest. But see, if he don't come up with it, it's going to be a problem because I know he has $8 million in the damn bank. Mitch is taking aback. He didn't know anything about the $8 million. He said, yeah. 
He said, you care about this kid so much, but this kid got $8 million in the bank, and he don't want to pay uh, the interest to me that he owe me. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not just me. I'm going to give him a little, I'm going to stall him out a minute, but uh, what about the Cryer family? Because they're the ones who sent the kid around. He's known as a surgeon. The goal wasn't to kill him. The goal was to let him know that this is going to continue until you give the criers back their money. So here's the T. You, he going to get got by somebody. Now, he better get them people back their money, and he better come over with my interest. So both of all of us going to be after his ass. And Mitch is like, let me go talk to Benny because he don't know anything about it. Now, before he began to talk to Benny, he was on the he received a call from Candace to find out how was Benny doing. He said Benny was fine, he was at home with the mother. She said she needed to talk to Mitch about something. Mitch wanna to talk to her too because he amazed that you really with the president elect? No, we not together. So she's supposed to be on her way down there to the bar, but he done left because to go talk to um Benny to find out about this eight meal. Because, again, it's not Mitch's family that's after him. Jim is sending this person known as a surgeon to go and do things to Benny until Benny relinquishes that $8 million that in that joint account that him and Hannah got, okay? So, where do I want to go from there? Over at David House, he, uh, Madison finally come. Madison come and he changes... Um, David's dressings on his bed. David is in extreme pain, but he refusing medication because his goal is she wanted me to feel this and I'm going to feel every bit of it because that bitch, I'm going to do something to her. Jeffrey, I don't like talking about your mama like that. It's okay, Dad. I understand. He says she didn't did enough. I will, I will be dealing with her. But Dad, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Madison is asking De uh, David, do you, are you sure you don't want to have any pain medication? He said, nope, no pain medication. See, he want to feel all that pain because it's only it's in, it's fueling his anger. So he decides he's going to lay down for a little while and try to get him some rest since, you know, his back and whatnot is messed up. And Jeffrey and uh, Madison goes downstairs. He gets on the phone and calls Jim. Look here, I'm done. They, uh, Jim is like, really? Yep, I'm done. Look, she told me that she got several lawyers around town that if something was to happen to her, they would release information that would take us all down. Jim said, you think she telling the truth? David said, yeah. He said, I think I know at least three of them. He said, well, we're going to have to get together and uh, figure out who they are and, and knock them down one by one. All right, I'm with that because I'm done with the bitch. What does that mean, David? You know what it means when I say I'm done with a bitch. Oh, well, I'm going to be that uh, very grieving friend, best friend to stand right by you as you, you know, have to lay your wife to rest. Uh-huh, that's what we're going to do. So they hang up with one another. <laughs> David is when a man is fed up. Now he want her dead. Yeah, he want her dead child. He want her dead to the bed. Now, over at Catherine and De and Jim's house, Catherine is sitting there uh, as Jim is trying to figure out where the hell White them went. Now, Gio, one of the damn guards, come and say, we're reviewing the surveillance tape, but we really don't see how he got up out of here. So then Jim realizes, wait a minute, Sarah was here. He left, and he left with Sarah. He tell him to go check the uh, videotape. The man come back saying that, yep, he definitely did leave out. Uh, he got in her trunk, and that's how he was able to escape. Now, before Leo came with that little news, Catherine and Jim was having a little exchange. Because when he realized that D.A. Sarah had, was uh, what he considered to be a decoy to help why he get out of the uh, house so he can go talk to the DA. She's talking about what well, he's going to talk now. He's angry as hell. He's telling her he don't want to hear that shit. So he tell her to shut up. She said, tell me shut up again. He said, shut up. So she sling a drink in his face and tell him, call, do it again. Call, tell me shut up again. 
Child, he called her a bitch. Now, I don't know, Katie, I like your newfound strength and everything. But, girl, you're going to have to mean it. You're going to have to be Veronica type of crazy if you're going to try to get some uh, get back with this man. But be careful because, see, Veronica then overdid it to the point where she done pushed David over the edge and he want her dead. You don't want to be dead, too, girl. We don't want you down to the film home, neither. Because uh, Veronica may wind up at the film home. What we need you to do is, if you're going to send out little idle threats at him, do something. Because when you told him, don't tell me to shut up the first time and you threw the drink in his face, and then you told him, tell me again, and he called you a bitch, you were supposed to hit him across his damn head with that damn bot with that uh, glass. That's what you're supposed to do, but you ain't do it, girl. But, you know, I understand you're a white woman. We're going to get you there. We're going to get you there, though. Keep, keep watching us. Keep watching us. We're going to get you to where you on the level of crazy, where your man will back down a little bit. So, after Leo say that, yeah, it's confirmed that he ran off with Sarah, Jim walks off like as if he's leaving the house. That goddamn Catherine got on the phone and called uh, Broderick and told him she want to see him. He like, girl, your husband said if I ever, I don't, uh, don't pay him no attention. He just... You know, he's just mad because you got more inches than him, and I want all of them right now. Come over to the house. The house you share with him? You really that scared of him? Hell to the yeah. Well, give me your address. I'll come to your house. What? Give me your address, and I will come over to your house. Uh, my neighborhood ain't all that safe. I'll be the judge of that. Text me the address now, and she hangs up. Now, Rocco done walked up on Broderick having this conversation. Man, let me tell you something. You heard what that man told you. You keep messing with his wife, it's on you. Broderick going to text her number and go home and clean up right quick because Katie on her way. Now, the last scene that I recall of the night, well, no, not the last scene. Let's go to the scene before the last scene is Derek and um. Hannah in the bed together, call herself trying to sleep, but see, she got on her sexy lingerie, and he feeling some kind of way, because it's hard for him to lay up next to all that chocolate and not want to take a bite. So, they trying to figure out how they going to be able to lay there in bed together. Hannah admitted that she's trying to entice him because she wanted to feel beautiful. He want to make you feel beautiful inside and out. Okay, girl? Well, they don't get to that point because then Benny comes walking in and he wants to be a big baby. He done put Derek out the bed so he can get in the bed because he don't feel good and he want his mama to love on him. And Hannah plays into the shit because she basically told Derek he can go ahead and go home. So Derek is going to the door to get ready to leave to go home and she giving him something he, she, he could feel, you know, uh, lip-wise. That's all they was doing. And, um... She got to go back in there and take care of her overgrown-ass pretty mall with no shoppers. That's what she got to do. So, now we done got David laying down. Madison and, uh, uh, Madison is sitting downstairs and Jeffrey comes down there to let him know I got your, uh, spare bedroom together for you. Oh, you don't want me to sleep with you? Mm-mm. Why not? I don't know you like that. Plus, I live, you know, my room is right next to my dad. Oh, yeah, that probably wouldn't be the best because I'm noisy. What? I like to let my partner know that he had, you know, I'm enjoying myself. Oh, really? How many partners have you had? Uh, We're not going down that road again. I mean, not yet. Madison said, well, how many have you had? Jeffrey said two. Well, what's Justin... One or two. He was two. Oh. And he's the one I've done the most with. How did y'all meet? I don't want to talk about it. It's kind of weird. It's complicated. Oh, well, we ain't got nothing but uh, time on our hands. We got all night. So Jeffrey sit down on the couch and uh, he telling him, I ain't finna tell y'all that. But as he's talking to her, Madison notices that there's a red dot in front of his head. It's constantly moving in front of his head, and he's taken aback because he know, just like we know, that's Justin. And Justin is just showing him, I can take you out. So next week, we're going to see Madison go tell Je uh, David that Jeffrey is in over his head, and David going to be trying to get rid of old J uh, Justin because he's doing too much. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, child, we're going to see that there unfold. And next week, we're going to see if Veronica get a chance to play grip ball, amongst other things, okay? And we're going to see a little bit of what transpires between D.A. Sarah and that old crackhead Wyatt. But that was it. That was all that I can recall on this episode of the Have and Have Nots. I thank you all for your support. Welcome to my new subscribers. I apologize. I know y'all was waiting on the Housewives. Girl, I have not seen the Housewives. I haven't felt good. And um, I just happened to see this tonight. So I said, let me go ahead on and, and bless your game and give you that. I probably will wind up... Um, just putting my housewives together next week because I don't feel like going back in the days of steady uh, going on. It's Tuesday now, and I still haven't put it. I haven't put it out yet, so that means it's gonna go in with uh, next. Well, this coming Sundays and last Sundays, I'll combine together and just give y'all a full review of the housewives of Atlanta. But that was it. That was all. Tomorrow we will be talking about the assault of Justice Smollett, amongst other things. Um, if I have vocals, if I don't have no vocals, that means that, you know, I can't do the video or whatever, but I'm going to do the best I can, y'all. It is, it's so cold. I didn't know that these frigid temperatures would reach the, uh, dirty, dirty, the boot like it did, but it had, and it has definitely made my ass sick. I'm full of cold. Thank y'all for those of you who gave me suggestions down in my community tab that I asked, uh, I put a post up asking about cold remedies. And some of y'all gave me some, and I'm I'm trying to stay on top of this before it get any worse, girl. I don't want it to get no worse. But that's it. That's all. I'll see you guys tomorrow for a let's chat on Jesse Smollett. And y'all have a great remainder to your Tuesday. Peace.